Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bytes of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the binary representation of our integers and our floating point numbers. Right, so in the past few bits of architecture videos, we've been really looking at how we represent numbers um, in binary in our actual machines. So what we're going to be looking at today is a practical example of how our unsigned integral types, our signed integral types, and our IEEE 754 single precision floating point numbers are actually represented. And we're going to be doing that through a couple, you know, very simple calculators um, for each of these value types. So let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start with our most simple type, which is our unsigned uh, integral type. So inside of here, we have a very simple main function. So we're just going to create an unsigned 32-bit integer here uh, called value. And we just set that equal to some number, so 171 in this case. Then we create a bit set from that value just so we can access each of the bits of this unsigned integer without having to do anything like shifting, um, at least manually. Then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over all of the bits here. So all 32 bits we have, and we're going to inspect them to see if they're set or not. So as a reminder with our unsigned integral types, um, each bit represents a power of two going from two to the zero uh, in the least significant bit all the way up to two to the n minus one in the most significant bit uh, position. So what we're going to do is going to check to see if each bit is set and then add that value if it is set to our partial result here. Then we're going to also print out which power of two we just added here. So we have this little printout uh, of a power of two and what value it is. And then at the very end, we're going to print our final result. So hopefully after inspecting all the bits and adding up all these partial results, we should hopefully get the exact same number as our value down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. Now let's see if we can visualize how these numbers are represented by printing out all these powers of two. So we'll compile unsigned.cpp and we'll go ahead and run this executable. And you can see we get the correct answer here. So our final sum from accumulating all those powers of two is 171, and we can even see the final pattern of bits down here. So you can see we added 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, right? Which is 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 5 plus 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0, right? So you can see that all those things we learned about our integral types and how they're represented in binary is really how they're represented in our actual machines. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove this executable and we'll move on to something slightly more interesting, which is our signed integral types. So as a reminder, what computers typically use today is what's known as a two's complement format, right, for signed integral types. So we're going to be using uh, an int 32t type here, so a 32-bit uh, signed integral type. So as a reminder, um, what these bits represent, they're still powers of two, except this time, right, um, our least significant bit starts at um, two to the zero, and then our most significant bit is still two to the n minus one, except it's multiplied by a negative one. So it's really negative two to the n minus one, right? So that's how we get our positive and our negative numbers, right? Our most significant bit in the signed integral types is a negative number. Okay, so our code is much the same as it was for our unsigned example here. So we just set some, uh, some integer type. So in this case, it's negative one. Then we get a bit set so we can access the values. And then we go ahead and iterate over all 32 bits in our 32-bit signed integral type. If the bit's set, we add the result, um, or we, we, we add to the partial result that we have here. And then we also do a print down here, except this time we handle it somewhat specially, right? Because we know that um, in the max position in this bit set, so we index 31 into this bit set, we know that that's going to be a negative power of two, right? That's at negative two to the n minus one uh, power, right? Because it's in this two's complement format. So for that special case, we print out that it's a negative power of two. For all the other cases, it's just a power of two. Um, we don't need to handle anything specially with our uh, result here um, in terms of handling the special, you know, i is equal to 31 case when we get to the sign bit. Um, because that's already handled for us by being the signed integral type, right? This type knows that the most significant bit is going to be that uh, negative power of two. And then at the very end, again, we just print out our final sum um, and then also the bits um, of our result. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here and we'll go ahead and compile 
uh, sign.cpp. And as a reminder, right, we're seeing the value of negative one um, it represented in this 32-bit uh, uh, signed integral type. Now, as we know from um, you know the previous you know videos in the bits of architecture series, what we should be expecting is all ones here. We know that um, our signed uh, our two's complement sign numbers, the negative numbers look very big, and the largest looking number is negative one, right? It should be all ones because it's that negative two to the n minus one plus all of the other positive digits. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, this a dot out. And you can see that that's exactly what we get here, right? So we get, um, you know, at the very end, we get a final sum of negative one, which is equal to, you know, all of these numbers added together, all of these powers of two. And you can see we have all of the powers of two here from zero, all the way to two to the uh, 31 here, or rather negative two to the 31. And our final bit set here is all ones, right? What we expected out of a two's complement number. Okay. So that's how our two's complement numbers are, are, are represented. Um, there's nothing special about you know, choosing negative one here. You could choose you know, negative 158,923. And we could go ahead and you know, compile signed again and run this. And you can see that we still get the correct answer, you know, negative 158,923, but we get different powers of two added together, right? And we don't have you know, all ones inside of our bit set. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on, and we'll go to our final example here, which is related to our most recent topic in bits of architecture, which is our IEEE 754 floating point types. Now, what makes this a bit special is that we're no longer just dealing with powers of two. We have these different fields, right? We have um, our sign bit. We have our exponent that's biased, um, which is eight bits. Um, and then we also have our mentissa that, we're, that we implicitly add one to. So this isn't, say, a, a comprehensive, you know, IEEE 754 uh, floating point calculator or anything. Um, you know, it doesn't handle things like denormal numbers, right, or nands or infinities. But for just simple uh, simple fractional numbers like this, negative uh, 0.625, um, it can do a good job at, you know, picking out those individual components. So what we're going to do here is restart much the same way. We just set some value here at this time as a float. And then in order to get the bits, we have to do a little bit of work here um, because it's not an integral type. So we have to go ahead and just copy those bits to an integral type so that we can get a bit set. Then um, the first thing we do is we work on getting the sign bit, right? Which we know is just the most significant bit of this 32-bit number. So if the sign bit is set, we set sign equal to negative one. Otherwise, we set it equal to a positive one. So as a reminder, um, we end up multiplying kind of straight across the results of the sign field, the exponent field, and the mantissa field. So we'll just set this equal to negative one if the bit's set, or one if the bit is not set, if it's a zero. So after we get the sign bit, we can move on to getting our exponent, or rather our biased exponent. So that's going to be the next eight bits inside of our 32-bit floating point number. So as a reminder, we have the one sign bit um, at the most significant bit, the least significant bit, Going up, we have our mantissa, which is 23 bits. So our exponent is somewhere in the middle there. So we have to do this offset of 23 bits, right? The offset of 23 bits of our mantissa. So here we extract the eight bits for our exponent. And remember, this is an eight bit twos complement signed number. So we have to take a little bit of special care here um, to subtract the most significant bit if it's set, right? Okay. So after we go ahead and calculate whatever this number is by you know, adding uh, to our exponent, um, the next thing that we have to do um, is get rid of that bias. So again, remember with our floating point numbers, they're biased, or rather with our 32-bit floating point numbers, it's biased by 127. Um, that way that the positive numbers look very large and the negative numbers by comparison look small. Right? In order to get that, we bias the exponent by 127. So to get back to the actual exponent, we have to subtract 127 from this number. So we go ahead and subtract 127 from our exponent, and then we calculate um, our result, right? So we just do, um, we use a power, so it's a power of two, so two to the whatever our actual exponent is that we just calculated here um, from extracting it and then getting rid of the bias. So this will be what we end up multiplying by in our final result. And we print that out here as well. Now, the final thing we have to do 
with our floating point numbers is we have to get the mantissa, uh, basically the fractional portion of our number that we multiply by the exponent. Um, now as a reminder, our mantissa, we implicitly add one to, right? So we just initialize our mantissa uh, with one here. Then we check the 23 bits of our mantissa. Um, if the bit's set, we add the correct power of two. So, you know, starting from the most significant bit of the mantissa going down, it's powers of two starting from two to the n minus one, all the way down to two to the n minus 23. So that's what we're calculating here. So if the bit's set, we add whatever the power of two is to our mantissa, and we print it out down here. And then finally, we calculate our result, right? What our actual number is going to be that's being represented, which is just our sine multiplied by our exponent result multiplied by this mantissa. And then we go ahead and print it out down here, both the result that we just calculated by that multiplication, and then also the result bits, right? So whatever the bits were of this result that we calculated. Just a sanity check to make sure we got the right thing. So let's go ahead and quit out of here, and we'll compile float.cpp, and we'll go ahead and run this. And you can see that we get the right answer. So our final result is negative 0.625, right? That's the value that we set inside of our program. You can see that we have, it correctly got our sign, which is negative one. It got our exponent result, which is 0.5, and our mantissa, which is 1.25, right? And so if we multiply these three things together, negative one times 0.5 times 1.25, we get negative 0.625. And here's the bit pattern, right? So this is what our IEEE 754 float looks like um, from the bit level. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. That's the basics on how we can actually see these bit representations and how they work kind of practically in an actual computer. Um, this is the fun thing to kind of do. As you can see, it doesn't take much to write these little calculators to extract the bits and play around with them. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.